I think a big part of this game was the fact that Alabama's offensive line held up better than Texas A&M's did. Because when you look, uh, Texas A&M officially, I think they had six sacks and Alabama had five. According to Pro Football Focus, Alabama's offensive line was responsible for only two of those sacks. Texas A&M was responsible, their offensive line was responsible for all five. Texas A&M allowed 21 pressures. Alabama's offensive line only allowed seven. But Alabama's offensive line, and when you look at those two sacks, the two sacks came from Jaden Roberts, the third string right guard, and Elijah Pritchett, the backup left tackle. So as far as your typical starters that you would see on a week-in, week-out basis, zero sacks. Caden Proctor over the last two weeks has only given up two total pressures, two hurries. But he's showing substantial improvement. Uh, I think that was a key difference in this game too, Jimmy. Yeah, it was a real strange-looking game for Alabama's offensive line. I think if you look at the running numbers and you look at the sack numbers and the and the the, the penalties, and you know, it's 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 easy to leap to the conclusion that the offensive line was bad. Uh, or gosh, how did how did you win the game with with that group playing so poorly? But then when you actually watch what happened, snap per snap. And, uh, and and literally break down each play over the course of four quarters, you see the, the five offensive linemen actually weren't that bad. <laughs> they, 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 they actually weren't. They, they were actually helpful uh, in, in many ways. And I wouldn't say they played a great game by any means, but they also weren't the problem that you might believe from just looking at the stats in the game. The stats in this in this particular instance don't really tell an accurate story. I, I think the group is getting better because the younger guys are gaining experience, specifically Caden Proctor, who started out the season as a liability. Let's be honest. I mean, he was a liability in some September games, and now he's 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 forming, he's 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 evolving into an asset. Uh, we got to remember how young Tyler Booker is. Now, Booker's, in, in my opinion, Alabama's best offensive lineman, but he's also extremely young. He came into the season with just one start. And even J.C. Latham, who's sort of seen as the, 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 the star of this group and the guy that's just almost uh, ready for the first round of the NFL draft, he's a true junior. This is just his second season starting games. Uh, he didn't play much as a true freshman, so he's really a second season kind of guy. And you're sort of looking to him to, to lead the group. Uh, McLaughlin and Dalcourt, uh, and of course Dalcourt wasn't available this week due to injury. Uh, you know, they're they're probably not guys that you're gonna see walk across the stage and hug Roger Goodell, you know, as first round picks. You're, you're not gonna see that from the, they're, they're just they're just good players, but they're not next level freaks like 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 so many Saban starters end up being. So I I, I think this group is getting there. But the reason they're improving, in my opinion, A, they're, they're gelling as a group. And frankly, Clint, here's, here's one criticism I have. I know that, that Jaden Roberts played because Dalcourt was hurt and his backup, regular backup, is also hurt. I, I'm sort of ready to see five guys. And, and I don't care who they are. I never put – I want who Nick Saban and Eric Wolford believe are the five best guys and just stick them out there. I, I'm not – I'm just convinced that offensive lines about chemistry – playing with each other, knowing each other's games, and and, and gelling as a unit. Uh, I think they're close to doing that. And, and I think what over the first half of the season was a struggle, second half is going to be a huge asset. Yeah, and I completely agree with what you just said. Uh, now, granted, I, I do think Caden Proctor is benefiting from the rotation. Him being close to 370 pounds, I'm, I'm guessing You know, he's been trying to lose some weight. Maybe he got too heavy. I don't know. It hadn't been asked. Uh, he doesn't look slimmer. Like notice, I mean, because he wouldn't lose the kind of weight where you would notice it this quickly. Um, but I mean, he might be 365 or 360 or whatever. Uh, but you know, I think him playing less snaps and you're not getting, even though Elijah Pritchett was one of the two offensive linemen to allow one of the two sacks that was given up, uh, you know, he's playing pretty good football too. And I will say, and you're not doing it for this reason. But fans will be very glad that they split reps this year to come next year. Like, how much yeah. did that help Tyler Booker? Even though he wasn't a starter, mm -hmm. him playing 400 plus snaps last year really benefited him and it benefited yes. the offensive line. So, 
Caden Proctor, I, part of me thinks, you know, could they end up settling just on Proctor and that be it? I think he's, he gets in better shape if he can hold up and sustain his his current level of play. I don't know how much of that is him improving, which I definitely think that he is. I just don't know how much. Uh, but on top of that, how much is it him playing less snaps where he's in better condition, where he doesn't have the breakdowns when he starts to get fatigued? I can't answer that question. That might not have anything to do with it, but it could be contributing to that. Yeah. Uh, so you, that's something that you've got to, you know, weigh with this whole situation. Uh, but the, the situation at right guard, um, you know, it, it, I think Terrence Ferguson, which you kind of feel like they were starting to try to settle in before these injuries hit. And this is why you need backup offensive linemen. And I thought Jaden Roberts, considering he played a good game. Uh, he was not perfect by any means. He had a couple of penalties. He allowed a sack. Uh, but considering he is, you know, the 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 number four guard, you know, the third string, because Terrence Ferguson's going to come in, be that first guy off the bench. Uh, the fact that you got that level of play against that defensive front, you really couldn't have asked any more from him. So give him major props for his, for his performance and really just the offensive line in general, because. Uh, it wasn't perfect by any means. They were they struggled to move that front in the run game. They couldn't get anything going on that front. So you don't want to sit here and say, "Oh, it was an amazing performance." But I thought they got some good individual performances on the offensive line. Uh, J.C. Latham was incredible. I thought Proctor the last two weeks has been really, really good, showing a ton of improvement. Um, and Tyler Booker, um, he had he was more flash in this game. You know, you saw some of the flashes of just what makes him one of the best offensive linemen in the country, but I don't think he had his best game from a consistency standpoint, which is to be expected against this defensive front once again. So that's not surprising by any means, but uh, you know, there's still some improvement that needs to be made, but give the offensive line a ton of credit. 